Welcome to the BRE Innovation Park. Construction started in 2005 linked to the off-site exhibition and we now have six of the earliest code level 4, 5 and 6 properties in the UK. As you begin to design to higher levels of the code 4, 5 and 6, you are likely to see increasing reliance on low and zero carbon technologies such as the wind turbines, photovoltaics and solar thermal that you see here on the Stuart Milne House. Things to note are the orientation of the roofs have to be considered at the early design stage. Whilst this might not mean the entire roof has to face within 45 degrees of due south for example, the sections where the panels are incorporated do need to be angled to their optimum. Here at the Stuart Mill House they've used an advanced closed panel timber frame system to reduce heat loss through the fabric and improve the air tightness but to get all the way to code level 5 they've had to include some low and zero carbon technologies. What we need to remember is that general members of the public are not familiar with these systems, so the control panels and the interface is absolutely crucial. Here in the house we have a touchscreen heat control system, so I can actually see how individual rooms have been performing over the last few days. I also have the ability to open and close the roof lights automatically in the summer. By pressing these buttons here, I can open them to allow the excess heat vented through the building to be released without using additional energy. You will have seen now from the early sections of the training that there are lots of issues to consider when the code is used to design your development. Areas such as storage for biomass fuel, maybe extra space for recycling, or private space such as this balcony. The requirements in the code are that there's one metre squared of external private space per bedroom in the property, but that's only really practical because you'd struggle to have a meal outside in a balcony that was less than a square metre. At the Barrett House here, you can see that not only has the area that will ultimately be used as a parking space created some useful indoor-outdoor space, it's also been used to provide an area for the recycling bins that are an integral part of your code strategy. The Hansen House, which achieves code level 4, has taken a high thermal mass approach to avoiding summertime overheating. By exposing the mass of the masonry construction and using nighttime ventilation, it can help cool the building to avoid those peak unpleasant periods and reduce the requirement for air conditioning. They've used these louvers as part of the window structure to improve that nighttime ventilation. The designers have created the building to exploit the natural passive stack effect. That's where high moves to low. So at night time, you open these vents to allow the cool air to come into the lower part of the building and the roof light opens so that hot air can draw out. The key thing here though is this provides secure nighttime ventilation. So in a dense urban environment, you don't have to worry about leaving your windows open at night. When I first came to this project, I wasn't sure Gillian and Nigel could pull it off, but I really think they have. No, it's not an addition of grand designs, it's the innovation park. Whilst this house, the Kingspan Level 6 house, may look full of designer features, the vast majority of them are here because of the code requirements. We've got lots of natural daylight. This is what's known as an upside down house. So the bedrooms are on the ground floor. Here we have the kitchen, the living room, and also a mezzanine workspace. That's because the daylight requirements are much higher for those areas in the code. So the designers have had to strike a clever balance between enough windows to allow the daylight in, not reducing the fabric performance too much in terms of heat loss, and maybe most importantly, not allowing too much light in so there's overheating. This is the Kingspan Code Level 6 house. Having improved the fabric performance and put in efficient ventilation systems, they decided to meet the remaining low domestic hot water and space heating demand with a wood pellet biomass boiler. The attention to detail in this Code Level 6 property is really impressive. You can see there are special membranes around the structure to create an airtight barrier to improve the airtightness of the property. You can also see that they've been lapped and taped to ensure that they stay in that condition for the longevity of the house. By creating this airtight structure, moving to a mechanical ventilation system becomes even more efficient. You can see here there's significantly insulated flexible ductwork but only short runs connecting to the flat rigid also insulated ductwork that then moves throughout the building to deliver the air and extract it from where it's really needed. 
the Ecotech house has the most water efficient fittings on the Innovation Park. We've got taps such as this, which are aerated. This works at two litres per minute roughly, but a typical tap would be 12 litres per minute. We've got the now quite common low flush, dual flush toilets, but then the bath, this is really quite different. A typical bath might be 250 litres when full, this one is only 112. Grey water recycling is something quite new in the UK. Fortunately here at the Stuart Mill House they've left us with a clear cover so we can see how the system works. On the side here the green tank allows the water to flow in that's been recovered from various areas in the property from sinks and from showers and baths. The water comes in, light material is scooped off at the top and heavier materials sink to the bottom. That's then flushed away in the normal system. But the water that's more purified moves into this blue tank ready to flush the toilets. We've discovered here that recovering water from sinks may be not be the best idea because you'll find sometimes that coffee granules or similar material will come through the system and it may discolour the water in the toilets. Technically, not a really big issue, but in terms of consumer perception, that may not be the best way to go. This kind of system could save you 22 and a half litres of water per day.